just come to the end of the Easter holidays, just come for a little check down in the woods before the start of term, and you can see how it's changed. And is now ready for me to make my wild garlic pesto. So let's pick some. Little tip when picking your wild garlic, look for a space where it's not covered with trees. It's quite open. There are trees here because it's less likely to the birds to have pooped on it. You'd wash it before you made wild garlic pesto anyway, but um, good start of cleaning stuff you can find. So the way we pick it is we go down towards the end of the leaf and it just snaps off. Hopefully you can see that fairly clearly. And then we just pick leaves like this, not all from the same plant because we don't want to uh, leave it completely leafless, but we just go around and we'll fill up a bag. Question, how do I know that it's wild garlic and not some other plant that could be bad for you? Well, a few things really. The giveaway, of course, is the smell. If it's got that garlicky oniony smell, then you know it's wild garlic, or ransom to give it its proper name. Okay, let's get back to the kitchen and make wild garlic pesto. Right, in the kitchen, here's what I picked earlier. There's 150 grams here, which I've washed of the wild garlic. Obviously you might have picked less or more, you just have to adjust the other ingredients accordingly. You have to do a bit of maths, I'm afraid, but it's good for you to do some maths. So the other ingredients, pine kernels or pine nuts. Uh, these are toasted. So what I've done is I've taken a frying pan, I've heated up, medium high heat, put these in and just toasted them until they're brown. Not burnt, brown. Brings out the flavour more. You could use hazelnuts instead. Hazelnuts work really well with the wild garlic. Toast them if you use them. 50 grams of Parmesan cheese. Did I say 50 grams of pine kernels? I hope it is. It is. Salt and pepper. One garlic clove chopped. The zest of half a lemon. A bit more there, but I go the Italian route of erring on the side of too much. And some lemon for squeezing in. And then the ingredient, obviously, that's very important is the oil in pesto. This is extra virgin olive oil. You'd expect me to use this, wouldn't you, if you knew my the only pasta sauce you're ever going to need. Some people find just using extra virgin olive oil, and it's 150 milliliters here, a bit too much. So what you could do is use 75 milliliters of the extra virgin olive oil and 75 milliliters of sunflower oil, which doesn't have such a strong taste. Um, I'll put the alternatives in the recipe in the description. It also works really well with 150 milliliters of rapeseed oil, so you could use that as an alternative to the extra virgin olive oil. So all we've got to do now is chop our wild garlic and then it all goes in a food processor. With this recipe, obviously you're gonna need some equipment to blend it all up. I have a food processor here. You could use a blender. Uh, one of those hand blenders would work, um, but you will have to have something to do this. So you may have to borrow it. So I've roughly chopped the wild garlic simply to make it easier to get into the food processor. Then in go the pine nuts, the parmesan. Don't worry, I'm not gonna chop the things off. It won't work until the lid's on. That goes in. <coughs> the garlic and the lemon zest. Not the oil at this stage. So the lid goes on. And we're just gonna blitz it to a fine paste. Next, we just want to season it with some salt and some pepper. So, sprinkling some salt, grind the black pepper, and then we add our oil. Not all the oil, but most of it. I'm just going to taste it to see if it needs any more seasoning. That is good. So I've squeezed in about a third of a lemon. I think it just needs a bit more pepper. I think the salt's okay, just a bit more pepper. Now I'll just give it a quick another blitz. Taste again. 
Lovely. A little bit more lemon, last of it, and she does need a little bit more salt once it's been blitzed around. Final blitz, it'll work with a fish, it'll work with a chicken, as a sort of coating on the top. It's such a lovely, fresh spring flavour. It's, it's a taste of spring. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put it into a jar. I'm gonna just top it up with the over, a leftover, just a small amount, just to give it a film at the top, and that'll stay fresh in the fridge for a couple of weeks. But I'm gonna use it later, and I'll show you what I make. So the first course is wild garlic with linguine, and just a sprinkling of our very first asparagus of the season, but that's another story. So the second dish is cod loin, with wild garlic coating, pancetta, roasted tomatoes, purple sprouts and broccoli, and thinly sliced goose fat roasted potatoes. And dessert is strawberry, raspberry, blueberry pavlova. Now of course it's not got wild garlic in. Who do you think I am? Some sort of heathen or something? Don't be ridiculous. The Monty, wild garlic pesto. Too oily, cheesy, Pine nutty, garlicky, oh, fair enough. Before I comment on last week's comments, I'd just like to mention how popular the merch, the Mr. Stokes bookmarks, have proved to be. There'll be more merch coming your ways, bigger and better, in future episodes. Also, if there's anything you'd like me to cook in future episodes, add them to the comments and I'll look at them and see what I can do. Now let's comment on your comments. So Will, 7286, welcome back Sir Will. I fell off my chair when the music at the end started playing so loud. Mm, yes, my fault everybody, I got my volumes wrong. It wasn't your devices. I'm sorry if I damaged any speakers. Josh William, 9020. The best Kirch is Ibn X Seeker Cheese. No idea. L Smith, YTSIE. Have you thought about doing an ASMR on your channel? ASMR. That better not be rude, L Smith YTSIE. If it is, I'm watching you. ASMR. Don't know. Shauna3297. Hi, sir. Monty is so sweet. Love him. <laughs> yes, he is. I wish I could get a hamster. You know what I mean. Oh, I think I do. Parents of Shauna3297. Get her a hamster, please. She deserves one. They're more compact than guinea pigs, although guinea pigs are better, but she would like a hamster. Lily Truran. 1921, sir, you're the best teacher. Oh, that's very kind. And a true top, and a true top G guy, gangster. Oh, no, can't be that. Giraffe, no. Gorgon's up. No, can't. Don't know what that means. Max is a loser. Oh, that's a bit mean on Max. Maybe Max is a loser. No, he can't be. Oh, here's Mr. Beast. Saw your merch bookmark. Laughing face. Laughing face. Laughing face. Laughing face. Loser. Do you know what I'm going to do, everybody? I'm going to finally call Mr. Beast out. I'm going to go on to his channel. I didn't want to because I didn't want to give him extra views. But I'm going to go on his channel. I'm going to see his 12 subscribers. I'm going to put it up on screen and compare it to my over 700 subscribers. That's right, over 700 subscribers. I'd still like to get to a thousand, please. Can we sort that out, everybody? Get on it, please. Anyway, I digress. I'm going to put his subscribers up there against my subscribers, and we're going to laugh at him. Bear with me. Mr. Beast, here we go. Search. Subscribers. Can I just say, Mr. Beast, I'm so, so impressed with you. You are my inspiration. You're wonderful. Um, thank you for commenting and giving me that constructive criticism that you've been doing every week. You really, really are a true, true genius. Thank you very much.